I, I say this with extreme agony, Madam Prime Minister. If we have to find almost three billion dollars to refresh and renew and restore the water mains, why would the government write off a billion dollars in national insurance money? Because, because, Mr. Mr. Um, Lee, who can pay? The who, who, no, 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 stop, because I want you to pause and stop, and I thank you for the question. Yeah. First of all, where was everybody when the insurance wasn't being paid, the national insurance wasn't being paid? They had Second, well, secondly, where was everybody when we kept saying over and over, Dale, how many times? Week after week after week in the House of Assembly, Santia. Week after week. Mm. About the printing of money. Mm. With a government that didn't even turn around and come with an early election, but wait five years and almost 90 days. And therefore, what we inherited at the end was $1.9 billion in arrears from central government. That had nothing to do with NAS. Now, if we didn't write it off, who in here would have to pay? And across Barbados, is it going to come out of the atmosphere like the atmosphere coming into water? Or are we going to have to find the taxpayers who already were beleaguered and did not have the opportunity to save money for almost the better part of a decade? Now, hindsight is 2020. But let us also deal with the reality that if you didn't restructure the debt, you heard it from us, you heard it from Owen Arthur, you even heard it from David Eswick many a day in the House of Assembly, not true? And what you had to do, because you know that there are people who are asset rich and cash poor. True, true, true. And if you don't restructure your debt when you're asset rich and cash poor, you effectively can become bankrupt. We had 23 downgrades. Now, since this government has come in, the first thing we set about to do, not alone, with the trade union movement, with the social partnership, the private sector, was to restructure the debt, the domestic debt. Since then, in spite of the fact that we restructured the domestic debt, we turned around immediately. And people who had $250,000 and less, we made sure that they could all cash back out their bonds. We excluded the savings bonds from restructuring. Now, I hear all of this talk from a handful of people coming from a certain section of the society. Mm. As if all of a sudden, those who in George Street are lily white and hands clean. Why don't you pay back the debt? You mean the debt that want to lick up? You mean the debt that want to carry right up to the sky? You mean the debt that even if we paid it back and we put a way of putting it on the backs of Bajans today who are still recovering from a pandemic, that you can only lengthen the lifeline of the NIS scheme by three years? That sounds like something that any sensible government would do. Let's get real. The reality is that we did what we had to do to stabilize first and foremost the dollar. If this dollar was devalued, we inherited a country with less than four weeks foreign exchange. Today we have 37 or 38 weeks of foreign exchange. We inherited four weeks of foreign exchange with a debt payment of 100 million due in two weeks. And when we had to pay that 100 million, your foreign reserves would have come back down to two and a half weeks of import cover. And at the beginning of a hurricane season that did not let us get out of the hurricane season without Tropical Storm Kirk hitting us and creating damage in September three months later. Mr. Lee, please, thank you for raising it. But I, I want us to understand this. The government is the people and taxpayers of this country. And when people say, do not write it off, bring it back, which part of St. Andrew residents, what percentage of the 1.3 billion are you all going to pay in one year, two years, three years? Because if we don't understand what we did by using the NIS to be able to support government spending, every month the last government could not balance its books. Every month the last government had to pay um, more money than it was earning and hence somebody had to print the money. And it was Central Bank and it was NIS. And nobody said anything when we were talking about it. Everybody just was content to let it go along. And we came in and mercifully, mercifully, 
Within one week of coming into office, we said to the IMF and we said to the creditors, we cannot do this. We are choosing to default on the debt because what you are getting, first and foremost, let me remind you, and especially with the external debt, and that is why he had a problem with the last governor of the central bank who became the advisor of the same people who were asking us not to restructure their debt. You cannot pay an excess premium for being a bad risk. And when the risk becomes real and the people can't pay the debt, you don't want to take the cut. It doesn't work that way. You have already been compensated month after month after month by us paying 12 and 13% interest rates instead of 7 and 8% interest rates because you said we were a bad risk. Well, the bad risk come true to be a real bad risk and the company no more. So let us be very clear about this. I know, and I will talk to the country in a few days' time on the NAS. Mm -hmm. I know it is not easy, but I also know it is what it is. And I didn't ask to inherit a government where the government didn't even pay NAS the contributions for a number of years, and it ran up over $250 million. <laughs> this government didn't put money in Apesil. This government didn't put money in Paradise. This government didn't put any in those things that you and others are considering nebulous. And all we have done is to seek to stabilize a system and to do so in circumstances where we say, don't carry people to the end of a precipice and make them fall off and drop down. Do a gentle, 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 gentle something so that you don't even feel it. 